Many of you would have heard loads of anti-SJW reactionaries complain about supposed politics in video games, unless it's actually politics they agree with. Now, they often say this at perceived like left-wing messages in video games or wokeness, and it's something that you hear a lot, and it's pretty ridiculous, especially when games often cover very relevant societal issues and it's just really hard to escape any form of politics when you're doing commentary. I recently played like Watch Dogs Legion and I finished it. Very, very big commentary on British politics right now and it's coming from a left-wing perspective. But to these guys, politics is like diversity, which they see as part of this like woke agenda of leftists taking over everything they love. But today I wanted to talk about Call of Duty, more specifically Activision Blizzard, the company behind the Call of Duty series, its publisher, and how in 2021 they are getting very political by hiring numerous people who worked to extend the Bush torture program in his second administration, worked to expand his surveillance program, and also people who worked for Trump's CIA into the company in various roles. So now, not only are most Call of Duty games neocon propaganda or revisionist history about the CIA, the company is now also run by neocons who used to work for the CIA and like Homeland Security and things like that. So in the wake of the scandals around Activision Blizzard and their lawsuit by the state of California and just all these allegations of awful treatment, mainly of women in the workplace, I want to delve into these recent hires and how there are politics in video games. Namely, it's people who ran some of the worst programs in recent American history who are now working for the publisher of your favourite first-person shooter. Now, before we go any further, I'm just going to plug my Patreon and social media for one minute. Recently, YouTube has been really bad with demonetizing my videos. I expect this one will be demonetized. I'm literally talking about <laughs> torture under the Bush administration. So I'm going to plug that stuff for a minute. Skip if you're not interested. But before we get any further, a lot of my work on this channel is demonetized because when you're covering more serious, sometimes edgier topics, YouTube doesn't like this. So if you've ever enjoyed my work, please consider becoming a patron. And you don't have to pledge a crazy amount. I want to build up my Patreon based on as many people as possible, pledging little amounts, like a dollar or two. So if, you know, you feel like I have ever brought anything that's worthwhile into your life and my content, please really consider becoming a patron to help me continue to do this, regardless of if YouTube monetize or not most of my videos in a given month. Also, if you want to join our communities, come check out our Discord and my subreddit. Those links in the description. And if you want to follow me personally, please check out the Cavernacle at Twitter, at Instagram, and also my personal Reddit where you can keep up to date with all my content and what I'm doing. Also, we are so close to 40k. For every 5k, I get a new chocolate orange. Don't you want to see this pyramid grow even further? If you want to help me out, just subscribe or share my videos. Also, I live stream two times a week on this channel, but I upload the stream archives on the Cavernacle Extra, so go check that out if you're not interested. So I mentioned the lawsuit by the state of California. Now, I don't really want to talk about this extensively. Depending how long this video comes out as, I might put a clip of my stream where I talked about this in detail. Activision Blizzard employees planning walkout following the company's abhorrent response to discrimination lawsuit. So the Bl Blizzard employees are planning a walkout tomorrow, the 28th of July, in protest against the company's response to a recent lawsuit from California's Department of Fair Employment and Housing, alleging a frat boy work culture that created a breeding ground for harassment and discrimination against women. Activision was quick to slam the lawsuit, strongly denying its claims and dismissing it as irresponsible behavior from unaccountable state bureaucrats. Um, so this is what the lawsuit alleges. So female employees almost universally confirmed that working for defendants was akin to working in a frat house, which invariably involved male employees drinking and subjecting female employees to sexual harassment with no repercussions. The suit mentions cube crawls in which male employees 
proudly came to work hungover. Similarly, male employees would play video games during work, engage in banter about their sexual encounters, talk openly about female bodies, and make numerous jokes about rape. As a product of this frat boy culture, women were subjected to numerous sexual comments and advances, groping and unwanted physical touching and other forms of harassment. A female employee noted that random male employees would approach her on defendant's work site and comment on her breasts. Female employees working for the World of Warcraft team noted that male employees and supervisors would hit on them, make derogatory comments about rape and otherwise engage in demeaning behavior. This behavior was known to supervisors and indeed encouraged by them including a male supervisor openly encouraging a male subordinate to buy a prostitute to cure his bad mood. One particularly disturbing claim in the lawsuit alleges a female employee committed suicide during a business trip due to a sexual relationship she'd been having with her male supervisor. But that stuff provides important context. So, of course, you probably know by now that the staff have formed like a coalition to outline the problems they have and how they want things to change. Bobby Kotick has hired like this famous union busting law firm to analyze the company's failings and recommend changes, which the staff are rejecting. Also one of these infamous Bush administration stooges has also gained themselves some controversy and actually deleted their Twitter because they've been getting so much criticism for their response to this stuff. So I want to start with naming these three people who worked for the Bush administration and the Trump administration. So the first one who we're going to focus on the most is Francis F. Townsend, who's the executive vice president for corporate affairs. Now her bio reads, Francis Townsend has served as our executive vice president for corporate affairs, corporate secretary and chief compliance officer since March 2021. In this role, she oversees government affairs, public policy and communications, among other corporate functions. Of course, it helps. She worked in an infamous Republican government. Prior to joining Activision Blizzard, Fran served as vice chairman, general counsel and chief administrative officer at McAndrews and Forbes Inc. Talks about her other history, then says... From 2004-2008, Fran served as the assistant for Homeland Security and Counterterrorism to President George Bush, chairing the Homeland Security Council during a pivotal period for the United States. I like the way they describe someone who was in charge of things like counterterrorism and torture. So the next person is Brian Bulatow, and he is the chief administrative officer, Activision Blizzard. So it says he's also served in the role since March 2021. And he oversees the Call of Duty endowment as, as well as key administrative functions, including corporate social responsibility activities across Activision Blizzard, HR, IT, workplace and information and physical security. He also has management responsibility for our consumer products group, as well as Centersoft, our European distribution and logistics business, and will be the executive sponsor for the Veterans Employee Network. Prior to joining the company, Brian served in the government as the Under Secretary of State for Management and prior to that as the Chief Operating Officer at the CIA. Before joining the CIA, he worked in private equity and he actually founded a private company with Mike Pompeo, who of course was the director of the CIA before being the Secretary of State. This guy is also a veteran. So one last person, this guy isn't as significant and we don't know as much about him, but we do know about his boss when he was working for Bush. So I'm going to talk about his boss when we talk about him. So Grant Dixon has served as our chief legal officer since June 2021. Prior to joining Activision, he served as a senior vice president and general counsel at the Boeing company. Dixon also served in the White House as associate counsel to the president. So there are the three people all hired this year. Does, you know, the stink of being involved in one of the most scandalous periods of American history, actually both of them, because you had the Trump administration as well, does that really wear off so much? I guess in the American corporate world it does. Now Jason Schreier tweeted out the letter she sent employees in the wake of his scandal and he writes, Activision Blizzard executive Fran Townsend, who was Homeland Security advisor to George Bush and joined Activision in March, sent out a very different kind of email that has some Blizzard employees fuming so i'm going to read this for you maybe not all of it but the good parts i'll edit out so everyone as the executive sponsor of our employee women's network and our chief compliance officer 
I wanted to reach out to you. I know this has been difficult for many of us. A recently filed lawsuit presented a distorted and untrue picture of our company, including factually incorrect, old and out of context stories, some from more than a decade ago. The Activision companies of today, the Activision companies that I know are great companies with good values, and this person did only join like three months ago. When I joined the executive leadership team, I was certain I was joining a company where I would be valued, treated with respect, and provided opportunities equal to those afforded to the men of the company. For me, this has been true during my time. As a leader, I'm committed to making sure that the experience I have is the same for the rest of the organization. I'm proud to be part of a company that has a hardline approach to inappropriate or hostile work environments and sexual harassment issues. Our Speak Up campaign reinforces our zero tolerance for retaliation against those who do speak up. We've made significant investments to foster inclusive behaviours and to reflect greater diversity within our leadership teams, including... And then she lists a bunch of things apparently they're doing. She also goes on to say, we put tremendous effort into creating fair compensation policies that, that reflect our commitment to equal opportunity. We review compensation regularly and feel confident that, that we pay all employees fairly for equal or substantially similar work. We work at a company that truly values equality and fairness. Rest assured that leadership is committed to continuing to maintain a safe, fair and inclusive workplace. We cannot let egregious actions of others and a truly meritless and irresponsible lawsuit damage our culture of respect and equal opportunity for all employees. We aspire in our company to do great things in our games, in our impact on society and in our work environment. We continue to hold firm to our principles and invest as we have in the past the resources to ensure quality opportunities for all employees. We remain committed as a leadership team to doing what is right. Now to have that response to getting a lawsuit from like the state is pretty, pretty brazen. And it shows that she's just deflecting and basically casting doubt on all the allegations, even though this stuff has been in the work for years and years and the investigation has been going on for a long time. To even get an investigation like this, they would have had to have evidence to go into this stuff. So it's very serious they even investigated something like this in the first place. Now, in the wake of all this stuff, she also tweeted out this article, and I'm gonna read you a little extract from it. So, Activision Blizzard CCO Fran Townsend is now under fire for this tweet. Multiple Activision Blizzard employees say Townsend has blocked them on Twitter for responding to this, and she tweeted out, the new moral code of America's uh, leaked, and the problem with whistleblowing the Atlantic. So I just took a little bit of this article out. So this was talking about like a completely separate issue, but I wanted to read a little extract of this and think about this in the context of her saying that these allegations are basically like wrong or mischaracterized and talking about like this whistleblowing stuff. So the article says, when I was a little girl growing up in suburban North Texas, not so very long ago, my grandmother, a housewife of the sixties would turn my cousins and me outside to play in the summer so she could sit at her kitchen table and chain smoke her way through her library of paperback bodice rippers. And when one of us would inevitably bolt back inside to complain about being annihilated with a super soaker, she would always eject us with the same dismissal. Don't be a tattletale. As far as childhood admonishments go, it was an interesting one. She wasn't telling us to do something, but rather to be something. I don't credit homespun wisdom with any special salience, but the suggestion that it may be useful to morally evaluate oneself before volunteering to monitor everyone else's conduct isn't a ridiculous one. It's wise to be careful that in one's zeal for justice or fairness or the more prosiac things that ride beneath those banners, one doesn't lose sight of one's own moral obligations or aspirations, and it's decent if you have a problem with someone to take it up with them before running up the nearest flagpole, but this is something people with the right views and the best degrees, it seems, simply do not do, just as a distinction between tattling and whistleblowing, resting as it does on a sober evaluation of one's own motives and the stakes at hand is one they often fail to make. So isn't that a lovely article to tweet out while you're basically dismissing a state lawsuit against the company that you have a massive influence in? So Kotaku has done some good reporting on all of this. So they talk about her career so let's, you know, talk about her career in the Bush administration. So she was one of the big boosters behind raising the national terror threat level during the Bush's 2004 re-election campaign based on a three-year-old based on three-year-old evidence. A decision then Homeland Security Chief Tom Ridge later said he was politically pressured into making. 
the then head of Abu Ghraib prison, where people were tortured, said he felt similarly pressured to increase the amount of intelligence coming out of the interrogations following a visit by Townsend. And we're going to get into that visit. Townsend later went on to defend the Bush administration's use of torture, including waterboarding, sleep deprivation and forced nudity. She says, regardless of what you think on the issue of whether or not waterboarding is torture, there were legal documents created and relied upon by career intelligence officials who were then implemented in the program, she said in a 2009 interview. There were very strict controls on the program. These people relied on them and now to release them and to subject these people, these career professionals to the sort of public humiliation and then the potential of a congressional investigation really will make our intelligence community risk averse. So again, this person is awful, responsible for awful human rights abuses. So Bush advisor toured Abu Ghraib, this article in the Washington Post in June 19th, 2004 by Jeffrey Smith. So a deputy advisor to President Bush toured Baghdad's Abu Ghraib prison last November to review procedures for intelligence sharing among officials there and elsewhere in Iraq, prompting a senior prison official to conclude the White House wanted more and better information from interrogations according to government officials and the officials' sworn testimony. Lieutenant Colonel Stephen Jordan, an army reservist who ran the Joint Interrogation and Debriefing Center at Abu Ghraib, told army investigators early this year that the visit by Fran Townsend then Bush's top counterterrorism advisor was among the pressures he felt to intensify intelligence gathering efforts in the prison. Townsend's visit occurred during a period when attacks on US and Western officials in Iraq were rising sharply and also when prisoners at Abu Ghraib were being questioned aggressively and sometimes humiliated by MPs and, intellig and intelligence officers. That included being deprived of clothing or forced to wear women's underwear, according to testimony by prison officials and an internal army report on abuses there. Jordan reported being told many times that the intelligence must be improved because of widening attacks. But Townsend replying to this said in an interview yesterday that she did not discuss interrogations during her visit to Abu Ghraib and placed no pressures on anyone there. She said she spent only 15 minutes touring detention cells during a prison visit that lasted two hours and occurred shortly before Thanksgiving. She also said she sought to ensure that the CIA who organized her trip was getting access to information held by others stationed in Iraq so that analysts could do their work quicker. And she says, I was there to understand. I did not have the cause to characterize my assumptions about their work. I just wanted to learn. Townsend said she saw no abuse and was unaware of complaints made in October and November by the Red Cross about the repeated stripping of clothing from prisoners and other problems. She said she did not recall whether officials there told her about a major riot on November 24th in which nine US soldiers were injured, three detainees were killed by military police and nine other detainees were injured. So again, lovely woman and has been accused of being the person who pressured the people at Abu Ghraib to ramp up this completely barbaric torture. Now, I asked this question on my Discord. Do like people remember Iraq? Um, do people even remember the Arab Spring? Because I know a lot of you are a bit younger. If you've never heard of Abu Ghraib, there is a great documentary on it. There's also just loads of footage, loads of pictures. The abuse and torture and interrogations they did there were extremely inhumane. So for a person who was like directly connected to not only that, but to other broader like you know, policies on torture to help run this company is completely gross. And no wonder people at Division Blizzard are really annoyed at this stuff. And this person on their own is bad enough, but of course there are two other people. So I read another article that said she met regularly with the Attorney General Alberta Gonzalez, Donald Rumsfeld and Robert Mueller, and basically everyone in the Bush administration. She was a top, top person during this absolutely brutal period. And she was also like chummy with Giuliani when they were prosecuting the mafia in the 80s and 90s. So she has a long career of being involved in pretty awful politics. I think she was also in the Clinton administration working on the Coast Guard and stuff. But people might think, you know, she resigned in 2007 for the Bush administration. Maybe people have just forgot and you can dismiss it as a one-off. Well, here is a guy who worked in Trump's CIA, best pals with Mike Pompeo, who was also hired. So um, the news story in the time, March 30th, was Activision Blizzard hires former Trump administration bully Brian Bulatow. So then it says, as reported by Kotaku, the Call of Duty publisher has brought in him 
who was previously the Secretary of State for Management at the US Department of State, where he worked directly under Secretary of State and ardent Trump ally Mike Pompeo. He recently came under scrutiny when House Democrats launched a probe into Trump's firing of the State Department's independent watchdog, Inspector General Steve Linick. During that investigation, Linick testified that Bulatow tried to bully him on a number of occasions while he looked into the possible misuse of government resources by Pompeo and probed the Trump administration's sale of weapons to Saudi Arabia. So Kotaku also reporting, and they said, last year, citing sources that previously worked within the State Department, Business Insider published a report calling Bulatow Mike Pompeo's attack dog and accusing him of overseeing extravagant spending on non-foreign policy related things like campaign events, donor dinners, as well as an unprecedented ousting of career ambassadors and other personal issues. The report also pointed out the new acting inspector general Stephen Ackard had not left his previous post as director of foreign missions and would thus report directly to Bolotow despite the conflict of interest that would benefit Pompeo, Bolotow's close friend and boss. This drew criticism at the time. So before he was the undersecretary, in 2017, Pompeo became the director of the CIA and he brought Bolotow in as a senior advisor and then named him a chief operating officer a position that earlier was named executive director. In this position, his priorities were the streamlining of the hiring process, taking a systematic look at the alignment of, of strategy, staffing, funding, and other resources, making the CIA's contracting process more effective and efficient, ensuring that the agency as a whole was positioned to invest in and leading cutting edge technologies, and finding innovative ways to protect CIA officers' identities and operations in the digital age. So again, another completely lovely guy. Massive bully, worked for Trump's CIA. Besties with Mike Pompeo, an objectively awful guy who was also involved with the Bush administration just as much as the Trump administration. So there you go. There are two absolutely awful people responsible for really awful things. And they work at positions of power in Activision Blizzard. So is it any surprise that even at the corporate level that this abusive stuff just runs rampant? So I want to focus on the last one. Grant Dixon, who's the chief legal officer. Now, what he was famous for during the Bush administration is that he took um, an Onion article like seriously or something. Now, there's not really much about him. He's kept like a lower profile. But the person he worked for as, as his counsel in the Bush administration was Alberto Gonzalez, who was the first Hispanic US Attorney General. And um, History.com reports, um, so after Gonzalez became Attorney General, he faced scrutiny regarding some of his actions, most notably the firing of several US attorneys and his defense of Bush's domestic eavesdropping program. The firings became the subject of a Senate Judiciary Committee in 2009, Concerns about the veracity of some of his statements as well as his general competency also began to surface. Now, Wikipedia also is saying some stuff about him. There's plenty you can read online. So as White House counsel and as later serving as the Attorney General, he served President Bush in this period. He approved the legal framework for the administration's anti-terrorism efforts and was an advocate for White House policy. He supported positions that enlarged the power of the executive and diminished prote protections for interrogation subjects. These rulings were vocally challenged by many scholars and human rights advocates and were partly overturned by the courts. He resigned following sharp criticism of the handling of the firing of nine US attorneys and subsequent testimonies during congressional hearings. He was a supporter of the Bush administration's policies of torture of detainees internally referred to as enhanced interrogation techniques. In January 2002, he authored a memo that explored whether the Geneva Convention, Section 3, on the treatment of prisoners of war applied to Al-Qaeda and the Taliban held in Guantanamo Bay. The memo made several arguments both for and against providing GPW protection to these groups, and it concluded that certain provisions of the GPW were outdated and ill-suited for dealing with Al-Qaeda and the Taliban. And it, he explained, the old ways may not work here. That's what the memo was intended to convey to the president. I never meant to convey to the president that the basic values in the Geneva Convention were outdated. So that guy doesn't work for Activision Blizzard, but a guy who worked for him in his capacity as counsel and attorney general does now work for Activision Blizzard. So here you have three people in various different roles who either worked on the US's notorious torture program, which saw many innocent, mainly Muslim men, find themselves in places like Abu Ghraib or Guantanamo Bay, 
and didn't have a trial, were in there for years being tortured, sometimes killed. And the people who weren't just like involved in that were actually like often directly responsible for these programs are now in higher up positions at the company that makes World of Warcraft and Call of Duty. So the irony isn't lost to me that I've made multiple videos talking about how Call of Duty basically like rehabilitates the war on terror, does propaganda for the CIA. And now in 2021, they've hired neocons who were in the CIA, who were mates of Mike Pompeo, who were top people in the Bush administration involved in creating and expanding torture programs. And anti SAW say, get your politics out of, you know, video games. But here are three extremely controversial political people now working for one of the biggest video game publishers on the whole entire planet. So just to finish off, Elana Pierce made a video talking about like, you know, maybe you shouldn't boycott uh, things like Call of Duty or World of Warcraft or Activision Blizzard products because it hurts developers. Now, Elana Pierce generally has pretty good politics, which I agree with when she can speak about them. I like her YouTube channel, I like her videos. But I think people need to realize in terms of boycotts, which is all you can really do as an individual consumer, is that it will hurt the like bottom line of the people at the top more than the developers. And at the very least, what it's good for is decreasing the value of stock. I know it won't make a massive difference. Call of Duty will continually be a bestseller, but you can't like put a developer's salary on an individual consumer when the top of the company is so rotten. And even when this company make record profits, which they did, I think, last year, they still cut a bunch of jobs. So it's clearly... Activision's revenue is not really linked to the salaries of the employees. So not only do you have ethical reasons to boycott Activision Blizzard if you want, because of the absolutely insane gross harassment of its developers by management, you also have people who are responsible for torture programs and human rights abuses and working for two of the worst presidencies of American history and some of the most destructive presidencies in modern history. Now being top people at Activision Blizzard in charge of things like ethics and charities and like outreach programs for like equality and things like that. So it's rotten from top to bottom. So not only does Call of Duty present a worldview that is informed by neoconservative politics, now the people working in the publishing of a game like Call of Duty are some of the worst neocons around. And we talk about Tencent and how like Chinese games have like a relationship to the state, but why do we never talk about this with American like companies? Like didn't Donald Trump's brother was one of the top people at Bethesda? And now we have stuff like this. It's clear that in America as well, even if it's supposedly more free, the state and government officials do have a massive role to play in the corporate world and doesn't it make you a bit skeptical when someone who was so high up in the Bush administration responsible for counterterrorism is publishing a game about often fighting terrorism as Americans? Anyway, let me know what you guys think down in the comments. If you want to follow me on social media at the Cavernacle on Twitter and Instagram, if you want to support my work, check out my Patreon. Stuff like this is 100% getting demonetized. If you want to join our communities, Discord and my subreddit. And if you made it this far, thank you all for watching.